the first. Hello, and welcome to Greet the Week. I am Mona Duncan, and uh, I'm here with my co-host, Jan Moray, and a feisty kitty that's running on my lap. <laughs> and today's topic is uh, one that Jan came up with, and it's making life easier. And she says that life can be difficult, especially if we are trying to control someone else. <laughs> but that once we learn and practice and use the concepts of choice theory, we'll never go back to anything like that of trying to control others. And that life just becomes so much more fulfilling. And so, Jan, you were talking about the benefits of choice theory. So what's on your mind? Well, you know, uh, last month I appeared uh, with you as the moderator on Making Sense of It and talked about... Um, you know, life in general. And then I think I made one comment in there from um, Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled, saying the first sentence is life is difficult, you know, and talked about how life being difficult and all these things come your way and you just learn how to, how to deal with it and uh, progress in your life. And then somebody, you know, after you turned off the, the recording, you know, where we open it up to the audience there to, to, to discuss what's going on, somebody made the comment, you know, that life really isn't that difficult once you find choice theory. And I've been thinking about that. And, and I really believe that, that life does become so much easier once you learn choice theory. And, and, I, and I find different situations in my life where I might get aggravated at somebody and I, I, I want to lash out at them. And I go, no, 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 no. You know, that, that's, that anger that I'm feeling is me. <laughs> You know, it's, it's what's going on in my head. And so I don't lash out at that person anymore, but I try to say, okay, you know, what's going on inside me? How, how can I deal with this situation so that it doesn't bother me so much? Maybe we need to talk about it or I give them a little information. And, and, and as I mentioned before we got started today, you know, we've, ever since the whole lockdown and COVID and all this kind of thing, we've had, we've had house guests almost the entire time. And, you know, when you're with family members, you're together and for a while, tensions kind of rise. And so I've been learning to, you know, when I, when I have these feelings, is to stop myself and say, no, 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 let's, it's, it's okay. They're just doing their thing. And it's a little different from the way I do my thing. That's okay. That's not a problem. And, and things just have been going very, very smoothly. And you think about, about life. I mean, you have choices in how you respond to the things that happen in your life, and you can either be combative and uh, tell everybody, you know, what you think they need to do, or you can just sit back and, and understand that people have their own way of dealing with things. So uh, I just thought that was something to, to kind of start off the conversation today and kind of get your perspective on that. We can kind of go back and forth a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. I've been a proponent or a student of Dr. Glasser and choice theory now for going on, what, 30 years? A long wow. time, 25, 30, yeah. And uh, it really is beneficial. And as Barnes and Buffy says, once you get it, you can't go back. You can't. You really can't go back because you know better. <laughs> Right, and it, it's knowing better, it's knowing better. And so you had said specifically to talk about some of the benefits. Well, um, we could, you know, go through the axioms and all kinds of things, but we'll just do more, maybe just talking one-on-one. -on -one. And so um, the other day, Sunday morning, we always watch, uh, we tape it and then watch later the, the uh, Sunday morning program, which is just about life in general. And on there, they had Stephen Curry, who is an NBA Warriors basketball player. He's two times the most valuable player. And they were interviewing him and his concepts. He's out now, not playing, you know. Anyway, uh, he was saying that he had been underrated all of his life that he, he was kind of a wimpy kid and then even now he's only six foot three which is short for oh, a, right yeah. <laughs> he's so <laughs> short he yes this, yeah and yet he has this hook shot and all this kind of stuff and so he has developed uh doing basketball teaching basketball coaching for boys and girls and they've named the team or, or the whole program is called uh underrated okay 
-hmm. underrated. And so someone asked him one day, he said, well, do you think that um, our, that our, we, who we are, don't you think that who we are is determined by our environment? And he said, no, I think we are, who we are is determined by our expectations. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I, 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 I kind of like that. And I was thinking, so what are some of the, the benefits rather than just actually going through the, the scale of the axioms and the principles and so forth of choice theory. But for me personally is dropping expectations. The dropping. benefit is having dropped expectations of what you want now, the other person to do or what you want them to be or, um, or your expectations for them. Right, 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 right. It's, you know, I don't know that we can not do that. I know just last week I talked about my trifecta of faith and that uh-huh. was desiring and, and, uh, you know, believing and and expecting, but it's a different kind of an expectation. It's an expecting is to look to see if there's any kind of life coming out of the seed that was planted. Not that random expectation of, I deserve this because of I'm cute, you know, and Mm -hmm. sometimes we get that in there that, that I, uh, I, I agreed to be employed by this employer. And so therefore I am owed that I'm treated this particular way. You begin to expect things that are, well, they're just, they're kind of out of bounds. And so to begin to just dropping expectations. Yeah. And sometimes those expectations, you don't, you're not really observing other people getting those things that you're, <laughs> that, that you believe that you're entitled to. You just all, come up with that expectation, this is the way it should be. But, and I I know you're getting out of college and starting a new job, you're very idealistic, but you realize that the real world is not anything like what you had envisioned it was going to be starting out. And you begin to get a harsh lesson that no, 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 that's not the way the world works. And maybe it should work that way. And maybe it would be nice if things were that way, but it's a a little tougher. But even though it's tougher, it doesn't make life difficult. You can learn how to maneuver it and, and, and benefit from it and find your advantages, find uh, the, the places where you excel and do well in and, and take advantage of those things and move forward. Right. And those who are able to learn how to suffer through without being sufferable and to even enjoy the natural consequences of decisions and things like that, then the healthier that we are mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally, everything. And so if someone does get a promotion, instead of saying, well, they got my promotion. No, yours is waiting for you. <laughs> right. That, that's a hard one though. That's especially when you really thought it was yours and then it just, it goes to somebody else. But, but it, it is true. I mean, what are you accomplishing by being angry and nasty and, saying bad things about the other person. You're just hurting yourself when you do those, those kinds of things. Right, because it's remembering that everything in life is a two-way street. Right, oh, absolutely. And that what we put out there is what we receive. And if we don't like what we're receiving, we need to start looking at what we're putting out. Yeah. yeah. And that's in any relationship, in anywhere. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that, that I was, I made a note here to talk about today is while we were on vacation, um, I had gotten into reading about um, World War II and, and Nazi Germany and, um, and the whole uh, Auschwitz and that kind of thing. And my daughter, when she was taking high, uh, history in high school, uh, they were studying this book, Mouse One and Mouse Two by Art Spiegelman. I don't know if anybody here has, is familiar with it, but it's a cartoon. It's written, it's written like a comic book, but it's about uh, the art, uh, he's, he was Jew, a Jew, Jewish, and his father and mother both survived um, Poland during the World War II, and the, both of them had gone to concentration camps. And, and so it's the, the son who's interviewing the dad and asking him about what, what went on during this time. And what really struck me is, I mean, because he survived, he's a survivor, 
and, and he was just so resourceful. Whenever somebody, one of the guards or people would ask, you need, I need somebody, you know, who can coach me English. And he said, I can do it. And so he, he coached them. I need somebody who's a tinsmith. Well, I can do it. And as it turned out on that particular one, he knew nothing about it, but he just wanted to be useful. And he found that when he was, had something of value to the Germans, that they took care of him. He got, the, he was able to get clothes that were his size. He was able to get extra food. And then they were, even though his wife was in a different concentration camp, because they had him split between men and women, that, that they would make sure she was taken care of at the concentration camp where she was. And, and I just, just think about that. Uh, when, when we think that things are so bad for us, um, what are we doing to, to, to help ourselves? And I mean, that, I can't think of a more difficult life than being afraid of what might happen to you and, and where you have absolutely no rights at all. But he was able to use these relationship habits to, to be pleasant and, to, um, and to, to offer his services. He was willing to work. He did what he needed to do and was able to get a little bit of preferential treatment. I mean, not that he wasn't beaten and hurt you know, during the course of it, but he was able to, to, li to live through it. And of course, the same is with um, Victor Frankl, you know, how he survived the concentration camps. But, um, you know, and, and I think back on those people, you know, how much suffering they had to endure and then I think about what we're going through, just, just in life, not, not just what's going through right now, but in, in general. And the, the trials and tribulations that we have are nothing <laughs> in comparison. And so it's, it's all the way, the way you look at it. And choice theory gives you that different perspective that I can choose how I think about it. I can choose how I respond to it. I can uh, try to make the best of a bad situation. And I just think that those are just huge lessons that, that we learn from, from living our yeah. life this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that need to control is a failure to trust. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's a failure to trust, you know, it's failure to trust others, but also it's a failure to trust us. Mm -hmm. You know, but especially in you know, a failure to trust your ideas, to your competence, your, your whatever, your driving, you know, you know, you want to try to be in control there. And as we can begin to release that as, as much as is within you, because I mean, people from the beginning of people, there are principles there that are known and passed on from one to another. And, and it's all innate that sometimes we need a little awakening to the fact of what is, is there, that reasoning that is within us, that, that uh, knowing that there's something better than this, it's kind of got, and it's choosing to not be offended. Right, right. It goes back to that, that two-way street, you know, that it may have been very offensive, but I'll bet there was a little bit of truth in it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, oh, that was, oh, that, oh, oh, that had a point to it. Oh, okay. Maybe there, maybe there was something there I need to pay attention to. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah, so you let me you, I mean, you always have a choice in how you respond to things. And then you understand that I, the, my response, my, those feelings that I have are because of the way I'm thinking and the way I, uh, I'm looking at this situation and maybe I can do something about that. That thoughts become things. Yes. <laughs> Those thoughts become our attitudes. They become our, our reality, our, to us, although it may not be real. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And so in all of that really thinking, I guess choice theory teaches us to think, kind of to wake up and be aware of what's going on is those times when I think I know to recognize that I think I think I know. I think right. 
<laughs> and just the fact that you know there may be a little bit of truth in there but if I were, that's that's what I'm thinking right now it takes the I don't know the anger the the pushback out of it to uh, so in looking at your behavior and how how you're behaving but how someone is behaving toward you yeah that if it is that the pushback on the, the control and the and the non-control as in the people you were just talking about that as they began to do something that was a benefit to someone else they were right. willing to right to go the extra length of being kind to them yeah and, and that also uh brought to mind this this book called uh, give and take i'm not sure if anybody here has read that by adam grant you know, and, and then his subtitle of the book is called A Revolutionary Approach to Success. And, you know, so that goes back to the thing you're, you're giving, you're, you have something of value to give and you offer it. And people do appreciate that. And when, when you try to, to help people or, or network, uh, network people, you know, you put people in touch with somebody else because you think this person might be able to help them. I mean, you don't have to do the helping yourself, but you're put, getting people in, in, you know, to connect with each other so that they can get their, get their job done, that people do think favorably of you. And I mean, that's just, I mean, you think about it. When somebody does something nice to you, you kind of feel obligated and want to reciprocate. But if somebody's constantly taking advantage of you and, you know, you're always the one gets stuck with the check to, to pay the bill, or they're always asking you for, for things and never offer you anything, you know, you, you kind of act resentful towards that person and don't really want to, to, to do things. And, and then, you know, that just hit home with me. I mean, cause that's kind of the way that I, you know, when I was doing the making sense of it uh, thing is that, you know, I was talking about being a female in a male dominated world and how I called it my female privilege <laughs> because I found that there were many opportunities, um, for, for me. And so, I mean, you talked about it initially about the entitlement, think that you're entitled to different things, but I never had that, that thought, but I was able to take advantage of things that went well. And, and I also, I, also, I volunteered for all the dumpy jobs that nobody else wanted because I realized very early on that nobody else wanted them. Um, and so pe when you did them, people were very appreciative <laughs> that somebody was willing to take to do it and to do it well and to, to do it right. And um, so it's, it's not all about making your life easier. Sometimes you have to go through some of the grunt work in order to, you know, to succeed, but, but people do appreciate it and they're willing to help you out and do something for you in return. Not that you're doing it just to get something in return, but, but that, that is the way to, and that helps to pave the road for you. If people are thinking favorably of you and you're doing things, you're seen as being resourceful and competent and that uh, you have something of value that, that you will move forward. People will do things for you. So it's being nice, it's stepping up to bat without being pushy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and without being controlling in turn. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. And to realize that, uh, and to kind of know what you do want out of life, and then is your present behavior giving you a reasonable chance of getting what you want? Well, that's that constant self-evaluation piece, right? <laughs> Where you're having yeah. to, look to see, this is the way I'm headed, and am I getting, the, is, this, is this getting me closer? If it is, good. If it's not, okay, maybe I need to rethink. Right, 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 right. And asking yourself and evaluating, well, how do you get from, from here to there? Yeah, what do I need to do next? What do I need to try yeah. next? Yeah, yeah. Do I need to use my words? Is it my attitude? Is it behaviors? Yeah. Is it, yeah. uh, do I need more information? Yeah, and I like how you're wording it where it's, what can I do? <laughs> Instead of trying to make, if this, they would only understand, if they would only give me an opportunity, if they would only do this, that, that's where your life becomes miserable. So it's how can I help them understand? How can I help them right. to see? Right, And, and sometimes, I guess what your theory does for you. Yeah, and so how do we do that? 
Yeah. Well, well, you just just keep focusing on. Well, you can ask them, you know, or let them know what your goals are, and because uh, because sometimes they don't really understand where you're coming from, and they're not going to ask you. So I'm going to enlighten them and tell them what my my goal is, and can you help me get there? Or what do I need to to do to to get there? Can we ask an open-ended question? Like, would you like to know what my goals are? <laughs> right. As opposed to, can I tell them to you? So you're uh, asking permission, right? Yeah, yeah, asking permission. And if not you, then who? Right. You know, and if not now, then when? Sometimes you have to. Because I think, you know, when you're looking into yourself, as to what can I do to make this better, it becomes a challenge and it becomes a, a passion and a goal for you to keep moving forward. Whereas when you're looking to somebody else, you know, I need, if this, they would only see how wonderful I am and give me this promotion, you know, they gave it to this other guy who just isn't worth anything. They should have given it to me. That just builds anger inside and frustration because you have no control over what anybody else does. All you can control is what they think of you in a way. <laughs> you, you can improve what they think of you. Uh, or, and it, and if it's, or, you know, just ask the question, you know, what do I need to do? What do you see lacking in me that keeps, that makes you uncertain to, to promote me to that next position? Yeah. So what do I need to become right. so that I can step up? Yeah. And is that being less judgmental? Is it being uh, more vulnerable? Do I need to be open? Do I need to be understanding? Do I need to ask you to tell me what you understand? Do you, I know one time in working with uh, some employees that were uh, at odds with each other, and I asked each one of them, I gave them a, a evaluation thing, and I asked them to write down what they understood their job to be. And then what do you like about your job? What do you dislike about your job? And uh, then whenever we got together to talk about, as they began to, this one guy, he, told me, he says, everything's already solved. Yeah. Because if they begin to look at what this is, what my job is, and you know, kind of what my job is not, and what am I trying to do that my job is not. So sometimes it's honoring those boundaries. Sometimes it's pushing against them to see if they move. But it's it's kind of a knowing a knowing how. And that's where we kind of fit in with the not being offended. If we need to wait a while and grow into it, then be willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that not being offended, that, that's a big one to, to learn because you're going to get offended. <laughs> it just... And it is a choice. It is, it is a choice. It is. It is. It is a choice. I know when, they're, again, working with the prisoners, occasionally, like if there was a basketball game coming up or something that I could take them to that they could afford a ticket to rather reasonably, you know, uh, then I would, I would take them. But they had to be in 100% compliance with the Institute because they, it was transitional skills of prisoners being released back out into the, into the, into life. Anyway, uh, they'd sign up, but if they weren't in 100%, you know, I couldn't let them go. And they all, well, I didn't want to go anyway. I said, yes, you do. Yes, you do. You just don't want to make the requirements. Get honest with yourself. And right. We'll be having more. Right. So, you know, so the next time, I really want you to go with us the next time. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to not want to do whatever you, you've been told to do and not be in compliance. I mean, it, you're, you're perfectly within your rights not to do it. But then you can't have this. <laughs> Right, right. The, the, the consequences of it's, it's a no going to the basketball game. Right. And so if you want to do it the next time, then which do I really want the most? And am I capable of doing that? And the bottom line is you probably are. You yes. Probably yes. Are. You just have to decide that that's what you want to do or that that's yes. more important. It's more important that you do this thing you don't want to do because you want to do this other thing. 
Yeah. And then don't, you know, sulk like a two-year-old. Right. <laughs> and give that. Because we so want to. <laughs> and don't lie to yourself that I didn't want to go. Right. As though that's going to put your macho back. But it doesn't. It just shows who we really are. And when we can get honest with who we really are, um, we're probably not that bravado. We're probably more like that. That neither are we the weakling. When we get honest with who we really are, we have we're we are capable within our own rights, without taking it away from others. Yeah, it's learning to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. But part of that is being honest with who you are. I mean, that is such a tough lesson to, I mean, I think you can learn it pretty easily, but to implement it <laughs> because you know, you know what you need to do, but it's so hard sometimes to, to do that because you just, you just don't want to. I mean, sometimes I think, oh, I wish I didn't know choice theory because I really want to act this way. <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly. but I know that's not going to get me anywhere. And so I have to suck it up and move forward. But, but in the long run, you do feel better about yourself. And yeah. And in that choosing to not be offended, that does not mean it wasn't offensive. And it doesn't mean that you're not sad or it doesn't mean you don't cry. Right. <laughs> you may right. not cry right, right then. You may have a, enough they have developed, or you can develop, let me put it that way. You can develop enough to not burst into tears right then and there. Yeah. But, you know, get honest with yourself. Yes, that did hurt. But again, looking at it, is, am, is there something that I'm seeing that's still there that I don't want to admit that's still there? Yeah. Because we can improve and, you know, we need to acknowledge our improvements and give ourselves a pat on the back for the improvements. But sometimes we think we've improved more than we really have. And so we need those things that could be offensive. If right, we... right, right. Those, those are the lessons that we, we missed. <laughs> and so we need to be reminded of them and tested. Right. I mean, we, test, we test people in our lives all the time. So life tests us as well. And... Um, it was just okay. Okay, I, I really needed to, to learn that. So let me. What would I? Where do I go next? Right. All right. So. so, what other some benefits of learning choice theory, which is the theory of everything we do is a choice. We just don't let ourselves know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and Glasser says this a lot in in his books is you know, once you realize that it is a choice, it kind of changes the dynamic. Because when you think that, it's, that you have no choice, this is all happening to you, I mean, that just really pulls you down. But when you get to the point where, where you realize that you do have a choice and you may choose to do the thing that is, you know, I, I do choose to go be grumpy and say these horrible things and whatever, but I chose to do that. And then if I don't feel good about myself afterwards, it's like, okay, one of those other lessons I had to learn, <laughs> let me regroup. And maybe the next time you'll, you'll have a different outcome, but you do feel, I think you do feel good about yourself. At least I do when, when I acknowledge that I've learned something new and maybe that didn't work. I don't consider myself a failure. I don't consider myself a bad person. It was just the best thing I could think of doing at the time. I needed for that particular moment in time, I needed to do that. You know, and that whole different way of looking at things, you're not as hard on yourself, I think. And so as we choose, if we want to say, oh, look, that extra large piece of cake just fell onto my plate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As we realize the fact that I was choosing that and I tell myself that, then we have some accountability there. We do. And it kind of takes away that need to complain and gripe and yeah, but <laughs> because I realize that I am the perpetrator of 
the choices I make. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no place else to look except right here. Yeah. Yeah. So close this down. All right. So I think life can be very difficult. And, but if you practice the concepts of choice theory in your life, it does make things so much easier, so much um, more fulfilling. And um, it's just, and you will never go back. You never will go back. <laughs> so, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, next week is Labor Day. We will not be broadcasting next week. So we'll see you in a couple weeks and everybody stay safe, stay cool and talk to you soon.